Hello kids, in our last class we understood what is separation and why different separation methods are required. So now you must be thinking why is separation so important? So let us talk about a necessary thing for living that is food. Have you ever wondered where do you get the rice for the yummy biryani or the fried rice you love to eat? You know farmer produce crops like rice from which we get the rice to make the yummy biryani or fried rice. But do you think crops are sent to your home and your mother just makes biryani for you? No. We get the rice from the rice crop through many steps. And you know all these methods are kind of separation methods. Let us see what all needs to be done to the rice crop before it reaches our plate in form of the tasty biryani. And you know, all these are carried out even by simple villagers, not necessarily in big factories as we might think. If you ever visit a village, you will know how the simple methods are important for supplying us ingredients for food to live. Okay, let's go to a village. We will see some few hundred years old separation methods which are still supplying us food to live. So let us see a farmer getting rice grains out of paddy fields for us to make biryani and some other delicious dishes. When the crop is ready, the farmer reaps the harvest, that is, it is cut. But the rice grain is still attached to the stalk. We can't eat rice with stalks, so grain has to be separated from the stalk. As we see, each stalk has many grain seeds attached to it. Imagine the number of grain seeds in hundreds of bundles of stalks lying in the field. How does the farmer separate grain seeds from those bundles of stalks? It is easy to hand pick the apples from an apple tree. but would the farmer pick the grains from the stalks the way he picks the apples from the branches? No, it will take months or maybe more than a year to finish separating all the grains. So, of course, he wouldn't do this way. So let us see how the farmers do it in general. The farmers leave the crop after harvesting in the field to dry the stalks in the sun. Then the dry stalks of rice are beaten on the hard ground to separate the rice grains from it. Thus, the rice grains are separated from the stalks. But what do the farmers do with the stalks after separating the grains from it? Do they throw it away? No. It is also useful. The stalk has many uses. It can be used as fuel. It can also be used as the bedding for the animals. It is also fed to the animals in small quantities. Apart from this, you know, it is also used in basket making. So, we see, separation can also be used to separate two useful things. Separation was done here because the stalk and the rice grains, that is paddy, are used for different purposes. So, they have to be separated. Can we obtain clean rice from the grains separated from the stalks? No. Let us take an analogy to understand this. You know, the green peas which we eat are protected inside the pod. Also, the groundnuts or the peanuts which we love to eat are found inside the pod or the shells. The shell is the outer covering which is not edible by us humans. Same way, each rice grain has a dry scaly protective casing called hull or the chaff. Here we see the rice grains along with the protective casings of chaff. The rice grain covered with chaff is called paddy. Here we see the rice grains have been separated from the chaff. Though minor differences are there, but in common usage, the hull, chaff or husk are interchangeable. Like the shell of the peanuts, the hull or the chaff is also inedible for the humans. 
Here we get the better view of the chaff. You know, due to the beating of rice stalks on the ground, not only the grain gets separated from the stalk, but the outer covering of each grain, that is chaff, may also get loosened. Now, the chaff and the dust is still mixed with the grain. So, the mixture consists of the heavier rice grains and the lighter chaff and dust. So, by wind or by blowing air, the lighter chaff and the dust can be removed. How is the air blown for this? Is a fan necessary for it? No. The farmers use a simple method. The farmer stands on the raised platform and takes the mixture of chaff and grain in a plate or paper sheet. Then he holds the sheet or paper at a shoulder height and start tilting it. Heavy grains fall right near his feet but the lighter chaff and dust get carried away by the wind to a little distance. So separate piles of lighter chaff and heavier rice grains are formed. The rice grain is further processed. And what about the chaff? Is that thrown away? No. The chaff is used as livestock fodder in the farms. It can also be used as a fertilizer. Not all the chaff can be separated using this way. Still many rice grains might be covered by the chaff. So the remaining chaff is separated using other methods. Like pounding using a large mortar and pestle. These are usually made of wood and operated by one or more people. Even machines may be used for this. When we think of good rice, we think it should be pure white after all the impurities are removed. Isn't it? But that is wrong. Coming back to our analogy of peanuts, the peanuts have a thin papery skin which is also edible. But we also eat the peanuts without the skin. Same way, once the chaff of the seed is removed, the bran is the next covering of the rice. So, the chaff and bran are not the same thing and this bran is good for us. So, in the brown rice, bran is not removed. The brown rice is the white rice covered with the bran. The bran contains fiber which is also good for digestion. To reiterate, when the bran is also removed from the rice grain, we get the white rice which is generally used to make biryani and even fried rice. Now you know the difference between the brown rice and the white rice. The white rice we get can have some pebbles and dirt mixed with it. We can just pick those few pebbles using our hands. After that the rice is clean and can be used to make the tasty biryani. But before cooking what does your mother do? Well. Prior to cooking, the rice is soaked in water in a container for some time. Then the container is tilted so that the water along with the dirt, mud and sand is removed from the container leaving behind clean rice. Now the rice is cooked to make your yummy biryani or fried rice. Mmm, tasty. Thus, through many separation methods, the rice grains from the farm reach our plates as a favorite biryani. In summary, let us see those separation methods in short. First, the farmer separated the paddy from the stalk by beating dry stalks to the ground. This method is called thrashing. Then farmer separated dust and loosened chaff or husk from the grain. This process is called winnowing. After getting the rice from the paddy, few pebbles or some substances left in the rice are picked by hand. This simple process is called hand picking. Before cooking, the rice was washed in water in a container for some time. Then the container was tilted so that the water along with dirt, mud, sand got removed from the container leaving behind the clean rice. This we already know is a separation technique called decantation. So now you know Using so many separation techniques, the rice from the farm reaches a home ready to be used in various dishes. We discussed just one of the many ways which are used by different people. Many people follow other techniques too. Also, nowadays, even machines are used for all the separation techniques. For example, 
a rice thresher is used instead of manually pounding the rice grains to separate the hulls or the chaff a rice huller may be used also a single machine may perform more than one separation methods like the rice miller can remove the chaff husk and the bran layers to produce white rice for consumption that was a lot of information about rice bye bye kids